you could be wrong about now, okay? Because one of the things we're going to try to figure out is, where is it that you could be wrong? And what does it mean that you could be wrong all those places? And what should you do about the fact that you could be wrong all those places? And then we're also going to try to figure out, what happens if you find out that you're wrong? So, for example, you're going out with someone, you love them, perhaps they've made promises to you, and, you know, poof, you find out that they've been having an affair with three people for the last five years. It's like, hey, you're wrong. And so now, where are you? What does that mean that you're wrong? Well, it means a lot of things. It means you're... It means a lot of things that you... It might mean a lot more things than it means, which is a very strange thing. It might mean that you're so clueless that it's just mind-boggling, you know, and that you're blind as a bat. So that's one possibility. And that you're like that, and you've always been like that, you better do something about it quick. That's a possibility. Might be that you hooked up with a psychopath, right? Which is also something that you should avoid. And but that would mean you don't understand people well enough to know when they're psychopaths or not, or maybe that you're fatally attracted to them in some bizarre way. You know? It also means that whatever future you're envisioning, that was really a delusion, because that's gone. And it also means that you've blown out most of your past, at least insofar as that relationship was part of your past, because nothing that you thought was happening was what was happening. So then you might think, one moment you're somewhere, and then you get the realization, and the next moment you are somewhere else. And so one of the things I would propose to you is that those are actually two important places. The one place is the place you are when what you're doing is working, and the other place is the place you are when what you're doing is not working. And I would also say, in some weird sense, those are permanent places. And I'll tell you why I think this, but I think they're akin, in some manner, to explored territory and unexplored territory. The no value proposition is, well, then you're going to be nihilistic, and that's not... I think nihilism is a form of mental illness. It's a sociological... It, it, it's caused by sociological conditions, but fundamentally it's a mental illness. You revise what you mean by believe. That's part of it. And that's what we're going to try to walk through. You know, this is a very... This is a linear argument in some sense, although there's going to be a lot of tangents. I want to... I want to... Show you how that might be done. And, and what it might mean. I mean, who knows what it ultimately means, right? There's just no going there. But my experience with these ideas have been that once you understand them... And it's a different way of categorization, I would say. All sorts of things that you didn't understand all of a sudden light up for you, and it's really helpful. You know, because for let me just give you a couple of examples. You know, I would say that it's a unspoken proposition of much of today's socio ideological thinking that there's something pathological about human beings. You know, like I've heard people say, like human beings are like a cancer on the planet. It's like I went to a talk, a TED talk at Queen's, a TEDx talk, where one of the professors, who was a radical environmentalist of sorts, you know, he told the whole audience, they were all people about your age, that if they had any ounce of ethical... if they had any ethical standards whatsoever, they wouldn't reproduce. It's like... Ugh. You know, really? He said, well, we've only had one child, and for me, I thought that was one child too many for him. But, you know, I thought, that's bloody pathological when you stand up in front of a whole bunch of young people who have their whole future in front of them and you say, well, you know, you're such a horrid creature in your very core that it would be a moral violation for you to propagate. It's like, you know... So, I mean, one of the things that, that, that's happened to me is, like, I kind of like people. You know, they're peculiar and weird, like hippopotamuses and, and, and rhinos and penguins and all that, but... You know, I certainly don't think that we're some sort of cancer on the planet. I really think that's a, that's a pre-genocidal idea, as far as I'm concerned. It's like the planet would be better off without any people on it. It's like, hey, glad you're not near the old thermonuclear button. <laughs> yeah, really, really, you know? It's like, that's an archetypal idea. Fire will cleanse everything. It's like, that's what Hitler believed. And that's why all Berlin was burning when he committed suicide. It's like, that was what he was after from the beginning. The cleansing fire. It's like, beware of those ideas, boy. You know, and so, 
I, I can see the intrinsic dignity of people and, and their intrinsic value and how that can be expressed across time. And, you know, and I value that. It's, 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 it's something pristine and, and remarkable. You know, and, and understanding, I believe that understanding these ideas properly can give you that kind of orientation. You know, I mean, everybody's flawed and useless and half crazy, I mean, obviously, but, you know, that's not exactly the point. There are reasons we are flawed and useless and half crazy. You know, life is hard, and we're finite, and, we, you know, so we have big problems that confront us. It's like, I don't think any sane person cannot be crazy, so to speak. But having said all that, the idea that there's something intrinsically pathological about human beings is like that is an absolutely what's the word apocalyptic idea it's like beware of people who tell you such things you know so and it's certainly not something you should be thinking about yourself god it's like who knows what you're up to you know maybe some of you will be great people you know good luck with it so so i want to walk you through what I think these ideas mean. And I'm, I'm not asking you to believe anything I tell you. It's like, don't. Hack away at it, man. See if you can see... I can't. I've tried. So, because I don't want to be standing on sand. And so, what I've tried to do is to look at human history and prehistory and to see what it is that we need to move forward. And we have to be united with our history. Human beings are historical creatures. And so, if there's a divide between us and our history, then all sorts of weird ideas are going to invade us. You know, it's like. It's quite funny because, again, with the rationalist atheists, you know, they basically think that if we dispense with religion, everybody would turn into Rene Descartes, you know? It's like, we'd be all rational. It's like, are you out of your bloody mind? Look at the New Age people. You know, that's where we'd be going first. It's like, we'd be like Shirley, what's her name, McLean, who I read once believed that the reason that there were so many allergies in San Francisco was because of aliens. It's like, oh, that's a much more likely place for human belief systems to end up then like poof we're all Rene Descartes like that's not going to happen you know one of the things Jung said which I just loved he said the purpose of religious structures is to stop people from having religious experiences now, that's a smart that's a smart saying so anyways so we're gonna walk through this and you know what I what I've come to believe is that the archetypes we're going to talk about, because I believe they, archetypes is a pretty good way of thinking about them, constitute the fundamental presumptions of human being. You, you can't not presume them. That's why they're religious. You, you can't escape from them. Now, that doesn't mean they're right, but it means that they're as right as we are. And how right are we? Well, we don't know. You know, I mean, there were... somebody in the 1970s, he was a journalist, he wrote a book called The Ghost in the Machine, you know, and, and this was a fairly common proposition at the time. His idea was that, well, you know, we're animals that have become self-conscious and that basically drove us incurably insane. And so we're like an evolutionary dead end and it's only a matter of time before we extinguish ourselves. 
It's like, that's possible, you know? No other animal has ever become self-conscious. It's a big burden. You know, and it does drive people kind of crazy, and no wonder, you know, because you have to contemplate your mortality all the time, or at least some of the time. And also, you're completely aware of how useless and ugly and, you know, all these other things you are compared to whatever the ideal might be. It's a lot of burden. But it seems to me, too, that human beings are peculiar in that we can actually choose. We have some facility for choice. I think we can decide whether we're an evolutionary dead end or not. 